Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Friday now, it is the 29th of September, 2023. On the update today, we're going to take a look at the second season. What is that? Well, we get the peak, and then we get this secondary peak that a lot of us refer to as the second season. The Western Caribbean, maybe the Gulf of Mexico, the Eastern Pacific gets another chance. And uh, that might be coming up as we get into October. We've got the very warm waters out there still, and lots of reasons to believe that this hurricane season is far from over. So we'll look at that, take a look at current events with Rena and Philippe out there, and what they may end up doing. I think the GFS might have a chance here to really score a major victory when all is said and done. We'll take a look at that and more in today's update. Let's get on with it, shall we? First of all, National Hurricane Center homepage, a good starting point. Uh, from the 11 o'clock advisory packages. The headline for Philippe, barely moving, expected to drift around east of the northern Leeward Islands through the weekend. That's about all they can really say right now. I mean, there's just not much happening with them, as I'll show you. And Arena, of course, moving slowly north-northwestward. That would be generally in this direction, and is trying to do that pivot around Philippe, which is probably going to head down this way. I'll show you. And I think Philippe's going to win out. And there's a good chance, at least if the GFS is right, that Philippe becomes a hurricane and then maybe even a major hurricane. Staying out over the open waters, just an interest to mariners, shipping, whatever, and um, a, an ace producer adding to the ace score for the year. And another major hurricane, if it does so, it would be the fourth major hurricane. But that's several days away. Uh, but very fascinating, as we talked about yesterday, what is happening with these two systems that close to each other. All right, so let's take a look at the satellite animation, and you can see what's happening with our systems here. There's Philippe. We'll put a P. There's Arena, and the two of them really close to each other. But what's going to happen, it looks like you just think of it as just this large gyre sitting out here with both systems within that gyre. And... Rena will go around this way while Philippe gets shoved more to the south. And then the environment down here is going to be very favorable for Philippe, at least if you believe the GFS. Philippe will strengthen. Rena will eventually weaken, and Philippe should take over. But right now they are close to each other. They are impacting each other overall and uh, not very strong, either of them. But it looks like Philippe could end up being victorious, so to speak, when all is said and done. And by the way, look at this up here, this fetch of moisture coming into New York, New Jersey, the New York Bite, as it's called up there. Uh, not going to spend much time on this because I'm sure, and definitely no pun intended here when I say this, but I'm sure your social media feed is flooded with the imagery. And I'm serious. I'm not even joking about it. It's the flooded part. Uh, inundated, whatever. I mean, no matter what word you use, it, it very accurately describes what's happening in the Northeast with tremendous rainfall and tremendous flooding, well advertised yesterday. But what are you going to do with tens of millions of people? Just tell them all to stay home? You know, they can't. They have jobs they got to get to, and the everything's got to keep running. So everything just kind of runs together in this calamity that we're seeing unfold on social media up there in the Northeast, at uh, New Jersey, New York, especially in Manhattan. Uh, my friends at Fox Weather having to deal with it in person and part of their jobs as well, it's like, wow. So there you go. Another impact from a non-tropical system, but a deep tropical moisture feed coming up all the way from the Caribbean into that system, uh, sort of like a hybrid, you know, like a nor'easter really re resembles that, and uh, very, very impactful, and unfortunately it is still going on. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm not going to ignore it. But I didn't want to, you know, you've already seen the imagery, like I'm, I'm sure. Meanwhile, I did want to point this out. We haven't looked in the East Pacific in a couple months, right? Um, there is some energy trying to gather over here, and that is going to make its way off to the west-northwest with time. And it looks like it's going to try to develop as this so-called second season starts to take shape. We're going to see a more favorable pattern begin to set up across this area of the Western Hemisphere over the next week to 10 days plus. And we can see that reflected in the National Hurricane Center's uh, homepage here for the East Pack. 
The seven-day tropical weather outlook, 30% chance of development well off the coast of Mexico, but we are now, once this happens, we will be into October, and you don't have that big blocking high sitting up here, the Sonoran, the Sonoran heat ridge, not there. So anything that develops will probably gain latitude later. And so folks up here in Mexico, you're going to want to really watch this as it evolves. We get all this lead time. I mean, this is seven days in terms of the forecast from the National Hurricane Center, the outlook. And I'll show you when we look at the GFS out that way uh, that we're going to have to watch this for our friends in the Baja and mainland Pacific Mexico and then maybe even parts of Texas once that moisture does make its way up later on. We're talking many, many days out, but the computer models are pretty good at, uh, at sniffing this stuff out. All right, first though, let's take a look at what's happening with our systems in the Atlantic. There we have Philippe, there is Rena. Kind of a replay of what we saw yesterday, and so I'm gonna move through this pretty quickly. Again, look what happens, Rena goes around to the north of Philippe. Philippe finds a much better environment and quickly strengthens there. Just look at the vorticity signature and how dense that becomes. If we just take a real quick peek at the lower part of the atmosphere, dipping down to 971 millibars and quickly strengthening to a major hurricane in the GFS here. And then it heads out into the Atlantic, really racking up those ace points. That's five days, six days, it's still there seven days and beyond it is still sitting out there in the Atlantic really piling on those ace points remember I'm thinking 200 before the end of the year uh, and that is December 31st not just November 30th the whole calendar year because we can get development even after November 30th you guys know that um, this will really help that this could add I don't know 15 or 20 ace points maybe more depending on how intense it gets. So the GFS, as I mentioned yesterday, may be doing a really good job here, or it's a complete disaster, and it just doesn't, you know, nothing really happens with either of these systems. We don't know for sure, right? We don't know the future, but we'll see how this evolves over time. Then let me just go back to the 850 chart here. I want to show you once we get out to one week, let's just take this out to 168 hours. Notice over here, and we'll look at the east pack in just a second, looks like a tropical cyclone lurking over there, and our wind direction over here is starting to change at the lower part of the atmosphere. You've got the easterlies that are coming in uh, from Africa and across the Caribbean, and then instead of just going straight across, we're getting this curl in here, this hint of a Central American gyre, the CAG, starting to manifest itself as we get into the first full week there of October. We're going to revisit this in just a minute. Meanwhile, in the East Pack, there's that disturbance in the GFS that I was just showing you on satellite. And as we take this out to one week, watch what happens. It develops into a well-defined system, uh, probably a hurricane pretty far south of Cabo San Lucas there by October 6th. But we need to watch and see because, again, we don't have this big protective ridge sitting up here making it 110 degrees plus in Phoenix, where this would just go on out into the open Pacific. Nope, when you get into October, the heights are lower. There's just not that much blocking air sitting up here, so these can gain latitude much easier than they do earlier in the year. And you can also see there are those signs of the wind reversal down here. That's that gyre starting to make itself known down here. You can see as I just draw this in, not making it up. That's that's that uh, sort of Ferris wheel, if you will, that gets going here. The scientific term, of course, is gyre, G-Y-R-E. And every once in a while, these pieces of energy can pinch off and take root in the Caribbean, and they can come up and cause trouble for the Gulf Coast somewhere. Or if they are more sharply turning to the east, western Cuba, the Bahamas. And this is going to go on from October into November and beyond because of this. The water temperatures in the Caribbean and the Gulf still well above the long-term average. The El Nino is still going on out here in the Eastern Pacific, down along the equatorial region, of course. And then the main breeding grounds for hurricanes is also warmer than average. So I think we're gonna have quite a busy time of it over in this sector 
in terms of just something getting going, and I'm not leaving Florida out, it's just the way I drew the polygon there. This area here, we'll just highlight it in yellow, fill it in, right? This should be pretty active, part of that second season coming on. And there's evidence to support this, which we're going to get into as we go forward here, all right? I'm going to show you a thread of tweets over here from our friend Yakov in just uh, a minute or so. But a reminder, we've already gone past the peak, and you say, hey, look at that, we're coming down, yay. But after October, which is right here, we do get a secondary bump in hurricane activity, and it is noticeable. It's not just a tiny little, oh, maybe. I mean, that's there for a reason. And that reason is because over this um, course of time here, from the mid-40s to 2020, there's been enough activity here that it registers. You understand that? It's there for a reason. And this is part of that secondary season or second season. That's not some official term. It's more for us that watch this stuff closely. You've got your early season, the Cape Verde season, or the true meat of the hurricane season, and then sort of your second season when the Central American gyre, the tropical waves begin to die off more, or they come in at a lower latitude and start to seed potential development in the western part of the Atlantic Basin. And with that very, very warm water that I was just showing you right here, this could be a very, very prime area as we get into October and even into November. So our friends in Central America, Jamaica, maybe the Caymans, we're not all, and the Bahamas, right? I mean, it, it, you just never know, especially with this setup and how the season has overperformed relative to when, what we are used to seeing with El Nino. It's done exactly what most of the experts thought it would do, being that we're almost above normal on all metrics. So why would it stop now, especially since the water temperatures are still as warm as they are relative to the long-term average? Now this is interesting, and this is what my thumbnail was based off of, is some of these graphics here that Yakov had tweeted earlier today. And this is a little bit into the weeds, as they say, so let me try to explain this. So he's talking about the velocity potential trends in the Ensemble Prediction System, the EPS, from the Euro, are starting to hint at a ramp up in tropical activity in the Caribbean second and third weeks of October. Now that's far enough out in time, we don't have to worry about it now, but again, I think this is just phenomenal that we can see the potential coming. You understand? And that's all this is. We're just, hey, stay aware. And these are the reasons why. It says, note that the rising cell, the blue-green colors over Africa and the eastern Atlantic is trending stronger, while the sinking cell over the central and eastern Pacific also trends stronger. So we can take a look at this. And this is the upward motion chart, the Havmuller diagram, as we like to call it. And we can see, basically, you're looking at now, at the top, this is present, and this is the future down here, into October. And the green is rising motion, and the red and orange, that would be your sinking motion. And then your geographic uh, area, this is longitudinally spaced, right? And then this map down here, this nice peeled out Mercator projection of the tropics shows you where these areas would be prevalent. So it's kind of hard to figure out, but once you know how to read one of these, you know, it's like a doctor looking at a CAT scan or an MRI or whatever. You look at this and you say, okay, look at all that rising air that's coming. And same thing here. Um, but this is a weaker signal. Okay, so this was before. Now, now look what happens. This is what he goes on to say. All right, now we look at this one, and it's getting stronger. All right, so just one day to the next, as he's progressing through and looking at the trends here, yes, the signature is getting stronger. And we can keep reading through this. He says, note also that the Kelvin wave, Kelvin wave signature, the eastward propagating area of blues and greens, from the Central Pacific end of September to the Atlantic by October 6th to the 8th, is getting stronger as well on the more recent EPS runs. This could assist in tropical cyclogenesis a few days after its passage. And then he talks about the subtropical jet in here that gets a little bit more favorable overall as we get into time. So the red is not favorable. This blue right here at the end of the animation, more favorable. 
So just, you know, showing all of these different signs that the atmosphere is exhibiting through modeling, that's not reality yet, of course, but the modeling is suggesting that things will get busier as we move through the first part of October and beyond. And then it just, you know, he's just got all these different things. I love this because you can get a sense of what to look for going forward. So if you want to read this and really get a grasp on it to the best that you can, because it is deep stuff. It is, like I said, it's in the weeds. I will put a link to the thread, which is right there uh, in today's discussion notes or description or whatever we call it over on YouTube. All right. Bottom line, the second season is coming. You know, we've had mostly out to sea stuff for the, you know, except, I mean, Lee was, you know, up into the Canadian Maritimes with some fanfare, but most of the action that has originated from Africa has remained east because we haven't had strong ridging. We did have a semi Central American gyre set up that gave us Idalia, and we've been pretty good ever since but we're not done yet. That's all, you know, just making sure people understand that. We get busy, you know, the baseball playoffs are coming up, high school football is well underway, NFL, distractions, world politics, whatever, family life. You think, hey, hurricane season's done, hadn't heard about anything in a while except that Philippe and Rena deal. Uh, we're good. Now, maybe we are, but if we aren't, we just want to make sure we stay on top of it, all right? And, again, tweets like that, people like Yakov following it, our friends over at Storm 2K, I read those threads of people following the trends in how things are progressing, and then it's my job to present it to you, and we look out ahead way into the future sometimes and look for these big puzzle pieces that can refine things and give us a clearer picture maybe later on. I would rather have the warning ahead of time than not. I think we could all agree. All right, all right, that's it for me. Let's get this online for you. As always, thank you for tuning in from all of us here at Hurricane Track. I am Mark Sutta. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.